<clears throat> Hello everyone, it is Stephanie again, and today is my Sunday video. I was supposed to go to church, but poor Melinda, who was going to give me a ride, was sick, so I did it online, and the message was so good, um, and the worship song of the day is going to be um, that they sang Beautiful Name by Hillsong, um, and I slept great last night, the last... Like five nights I've woken up early, so I actually slept until my alarm went off. So thank you, Jesus, for good sleep. Okay, so I hope you all slept well too. Okay, so um, the message, so this um, sermon series that the pastor is putting on is for men specifically. Um, so it's called A Thin Red Line, the sermon series. Um, so before I, I get into the message, <clears throat> Um, so what the pastor was saying, um, was, you know, why are we doing just a series for men when the women are there? But he said, it's really because when we do things like this for the man, um, specifically to them, then that means they're, the men are going to be better men and fathers from ministering to them specifically during the series. Um, and also, he said this statistic of them, um, of yes, like 4% of women in the entire world are ones who aren't in a relationship or don't plan to be, don't plan to have kids. So that means 96 of us, percent of us um, will need, will benefit from when men get ministered to and that we can have their, yes have the truth from them. Um, yes, I said that wrong, but you guys know what I'm trying to say. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm gonna give a vision I saw, um, and then, um, cause yeah, I'll just give it to you now and then share about the message. So, uh, but there, um, Jesus's heart is really breaking for, I. For all the men who grew up without a father or fathers who um, were terrible, abusive, you can put it, fill in the blank there, um, but he's just like sobbing and there's like, remember in the passion when the, yeah, when Jesus died and then there just started this huge storm. So I see like rain just pouring down out of the heavens. And that is Jesus' heartbreaking for each of you men. Um, and that it's okay um, to cry and that you can trust that God has good plans for you and it's safe to cry to him. So that's for you men that are my subscribers. Okay, so, all right. Um, so this part is about, um, so just a few little things um, that... Um, there is something happening right now with our men that is called like toxic masculinity um, that there's this big difference between boys and men um, that boys step down and men step up so um, that also there was a funny video about anyways about just being okay living with being okay and not um, how we've been men have been settling with um, that just being okay when you um, were designed for so much more. Um, so, okay. And, um, yep, God needs to raise up godly men. And so they were talking about the prod prodigal son um, and how that the son, you know, um, was settling for the pig scraps or whatever. Um, because he thought he had gone too far for God, his father to ever take him back. Um, but, and that the prodigal son was settling for okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Oh yeah, and every time a man gets raised up well, Every person in his life um, is affected by that for the best. So, um, okay. Prodigal son, yes. Uh, 
Uh, let's see. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and Greg was talking about how he had settled for just okay for most of his life, Pastor. So he told a story of this guy at his church when he was growing up because Greg was like eight and um, he, he really thought this guy was super cool that would show up at church because he was white and had an afro and Greg was like, I'll never be able to grow an afro, but how Greg really thought that guy was super cool. Um, and so, but then there would be times he would just like not be at church um, oh yeah, we we're talking about, okay, the second son in this situation, but anyways, um, so he would just disappear and not come to church for two or three months, and then the people, Greg was saying, were like, whisper, 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 but basically like, oh, how long is he in jail this time, and like gossiping about him, um, and that, that kind of ties into the older brother, um, who, um, was like, I've been going to church, you know, and, and I've, you know, never said I go to church every day, you know, and that, that spirit is the same as this guy, the people who were left behind at the church where Greg would just, oh, sorry, of his friend that wasn't showing up at church, so, um, people would just talk about him, like the older brother was talking about the younger brother. Um, I might be messing this up a little bit, but they do correlate. So, okay. Okay. And how um, the story would be different if the father, oh yeah, that's the other thing. Okay. If, do we think, men probably think that if the, if the father knew everything that they had done, that his love would be different for um, God's love would be different. Um, but so because a lot of people, men have been growing up with terrible father situations or yeah, abs then or whatever. So um, that I think a lot of people and Greg especially said, you know, what if he knew every detail of how the wild living that the son had done, would it change his love for him? Um, and the truth is, no, um, so, okay. Okay, I think that's all my little tidbits. Um, so now I'm going to read the poem of the day first. And this one is titled, Prayers Are the Prayers are the stairs to God. Prayers are the stairs we must climb every day. We would reach God, there is no other way. For when, for we learn to know God when we meet him in prayer and ask him to lighten our burden of care. So start in the morning and though the way is steep, climb ever upward till your eyes close and sleep. For prayers are the stairs that lead to the Lord and to meet him in prayer is the climber's reward. Wow, I think this is for you men, especially that if it's, it's a matter of getting, walking up the stairs, even though it's gonna be hard and scary, but when you get to the top, then, um, you'll have this beautiful perspective like at the top of a mountain and just so that was just a thought I had when I was reading that. Okay. And finally, love heals. And we're still in the chapter 10, love heals during the act of forgiveness. And last time I just read the first paragraph. So now I'm going to finish, um, Forgiving ourselves is this little snippet. 
I'm gonna finish so I'm reminded of the day I was sitting on a bench outside the woman with a woman in the Thistle Farms community. She began to weep. I hadn't said a word, then she started talking about how she didn't get it. She got that people loved her. She got that her faith told her she was forgiven. She got that she needed to grow in the community so she could live to her full potential when she said she couldn't what she said she couldn't get was how to forgive herself. What, what can you forgive? I asked her. What can't you forgive? The sobs grew and she started sharing a litany of the wrongs from about the age of 12 when she was 30 to 12 to t until she was 30. It was some hard, sad baggage to carry but for whatever reason, on that particular day, she was done with it. She was ready to confess it in a safe place and see if she could find healing. As I listened, I didn't go through each of the wrongs and, and, and parse them out. I just held, held the story for her and kept saying silent prayers for her to find the faith to forgive herself so she could lose her, love herself. She will have time to make restitution and to discover how she was a victim long before she was a criminal. She will have a great therapist to help her figure out how to work through it all whether though, whether through what, what, talking, writing, painting, or something else, she will have a community to pray with her to help her find solace in the scripture. Also, all she needed before she began was a, someone to hear her story and love her. These, those times. Those are the times I feel most grateful for. All I have learned for about forgiveness. Once we forgive ourselves, when others, then stories we may have been hard for us to hear are now an opportunity to show compassion for a sister. That feels like a motivation enough for all of us to start working on forgiving ourselves. Whether you find a safe place to share the worst of it or you need to confess it all. God letting your burdens pour out and taking them off, your heart will free you. Okay, time to pray and I'm gonna be praying for the men. So prepare yourselves. Oh, Father, thank you for all the men that I have for subscribers that will be watching this video. And I ask that this message and the vision you gave me, Lord, would just real, help them realize that it is safe to cry to you and be vulnerable with you, Lord. And as I cry and grieve, um, they would just feel your arms around them and know that um, they are always safe with you. All right, you guys, you're all caught up and I will talk when I have more to say. Have blessed weeks.